In this episode, I'll explain the circle of confusion. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Brought to you, as always, by Adorama. Adorama is the camera store that is the absolute best in the world. Anything you see in this video, you can get at Adorama.com. Check them out and see exactly what the hoopla is all about. They are incredible. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about the circle of confusion. Now, this is sort of a technical episode, and I'm doing this because a lot of people have written in and said, what exactly is the circle of confusion? Well, the circle of confusion is a technical term that helps you understand how our camera focuses light, it helps us understand depth of field and bokeh, and it'll also help you understand why some lenses are so darn expensive because they focus light a little bit differently than other lenses. Now this is a highly technical episode and so I have oversimplified a lot of this stuff so if you know all about circle of confusion don't get angry that I've oversimplified stuff but I'm doing this because I just want you to understand the basics of the circle of confusion. Now to understand this I'm asking for some help so to help me explain all of this stuff Lex is here to walk through all of this with me and uh, we're going to do a little animation and some uh, walkthroughs and all kinds of stuff so you can clearly understand the circle of confusion. And really to understand that, we need to understand how our camera focuses. So let's just, for the sake of argument, say that I want to focus my camera on Lex's face. Well, Lex's face would be called the point of focus. Now I made that term up, so don't quote me on that. This is the point of focus. I want to focus on her face. Now light is going to travel in a cone. It's going to go into the lens. It's coming into, so from big to small. Now in our lens, it's not actually one lens, it's a series of lenses and then each lens inside of this lens, those are called lens elements and they do different things that we'll find out about later. But the one that we care about right now is called the focus element. And when we focus our camera, that focus element is moving back and forth. And what it's doing, it's changing what's called the focus point. So when our light comes into our lens, it comes in through that element and then it's focused to a point and that point moves back and forth depending on our focus. And what we're trying to do is get that focus point to line up with what's called the plane of focus. In other words, our camera's sensor or if you have film, your camera's film. And when those two things line up, well, your focus point is in focus. In other words, Lex's face is going to be in focus on our camera sensor. Now, I know that sounds sort of confusing when we do it like this. So to make that crystal clear, I want to show you this animation. Okay, let's keep this very simple. Let's say we have a point source of light, something like a flashlight, a small Christmas light, or something similar. A point source of light is a round light like the sun. Now let's add our focus element. That's the glass inside our lens that focuses our subject. When our point source of light shines, it travels through our focus element and is focused to a focal point. When our focal plane and our focal point meet, we have an image that's in focus. When we focus our lens, the focus element moves our focal point. If we take our two-dimensional drawing and make it three-dimensional, you'll notice that our point source of light is focused as a cone. When we rotate the cone, it becomes a circle. And that circle becomes smaller the closer we get to our focal point. The circle also becomes larger as we move past our focal point. Notice that our circle becomes a very small dot at the focal point. Let's look at our two-dimensional drawing again. And let's zoom in on our focal point and focal plane. When our focal point and focal plane are aligned, our point source of light will be a clear point, or a dot. That's how we perceive focus. But if the focal point is off the focal plane by a small amount, we'll have a dot that's slightly larger, but our eyes will still perceive that as in focus. There is a range just before and after our focal point that we will always perceive as in focus, even though technically it's not in focus. That range is called the circle of confusion. Anything the size of that circle or smaller will be perceived as in focus. Our eyes can't really tell the difference between a perfect focus and something that's just off focus. Both the small and slightly larger dots look pretty much the same to us. When we use a smaller aperture setting, that changes the convergence of our focus. That makes the range of the circle of confusion larger. And that's what gives us greater depth of field. 
The point of focus is inside the circle of confusion, but things in front and behind it are also inside the circle of confusion. Well, I think the animation really helped us understand more clearly about the circle of confusion, but to help understand how the circle of confusion affects bokeh, Lex and I went out last night and we shot some stuff at night, so let's take a look at that. In this nighttime scene, we have our aperture set to 1.4, and notice how the lights behind Lex are nice and out of focus. We have a terrific bokeh. Now when I take my aperture and I start stopping it down to f2, f2.8, down to 4, 5.6, we can see that Lex is now underexposed. That's okay, because what we're really paying attention to is the background. Look at those lights, how they become more of a point source of light. If you go down to f.8, you can see that they're really in focus. Now let's go all the way back to 1.4, and you can see that Lex looks terrific, but those lights behind her become soft and out of focus. All right, well now that we know all about the circle of confusion, how light moves in a cone and it hits our focal point, and so when that hits our focal plane, things are in focus, we have all of that. But why does the circle of confusion uh, tell us why some lenses are more expensive than others? Well, here's why. In uh, light, we have three primary colors, RGB, red, green, and blue. When red and green and blue go through our lens elements, well, they're traveling at different wavelengths, which means when they hit our focal point, they don't all hit the same focal point. One is here, and one is here, and one is here. To get those all to line up, we have to have several more elements in our lens to correct all of those colors moving at different wavelengths so they all line up at the same place. Now on uh, lower priced lenses, you don't have all those extra elements and so you'll have a shift. And so blue usually hits the focal